Hey folks, T with Mountain Readiness, and today we are making a video going over our chicken coop. Uh, we call this the Chicks Carlton, as you can see back behind me. Of course, running the camber is my beautiful wife, Amber. Uh, say hi, babe. Hi. <laughs> You'll have to cut this out probably too, or we just leave it, doesn't matter. But uh, Amber, she, she posted a couple pictures of our chicken coop and you guys like had so many questions we thought let's just make a video throw it out there and explain the entire thing step by step how we put this thing together so uh and of course if you would be so kind do all the things like share subscribe ring the bell comment uh all of our social media platforms it really helps us out and uh, especially in getting the word out of, of self-sustainability. We want to push this out. It's so important in this day and age. We feel it's important. And anything we can do to get people excited and motivated to, to homestead and, and, and uh, take care of themselves in this day and age, just grocery prices alone, I mean, it's worth it. So without further ado, we have our chicken coop. We're standing outside of the coop right now. And what we did was an eight by 12. We went with an eight by 12 building. The only real tough part of putting this together was that we are on the side of a hill and versus excavating out half the hillside, we, we just opted to build it on the side of the hill and, and, and work with what we had of the layout of land. So other than that, if you've got a night, of course, the, the perfect spot would be a flat area. Um, and this makes this build a whole lot easier. So what we did was is we'll go inside here in a second, but outside is just a uh, exterior uh, plywood. We did a four by four pole barn style construction and uh, soft pine for the roof um, that we did 16 on center and we dropped us a couple foot of overhang on both front and back just to use it. Shed water away from the structure especially sitting on the side of a hill like this um, as well as uh, being able to store stuff underneath there and not get wet. We also added some timbers across the face because we are on kind of a hill and we dropped us some mulch in here to make us some nice little walkways so we are not dealing with the mud constantly. Uh, currently is not a problem because we're a little chilly here. Um, once the, the building was constructed, we, we dug down around the base, around a foot to 16 inches. And you can see right here, we installed a hardware cloth that goes down around a foot to 16 inches below the grade of the ground. Now, a lot of people say this is overkill. I personally, with the way the predators are, predators are out in this area, and if you can fan out over here, you can see around we're a little bit out and uh, everything is super hungry out here, it seems. So to keep the predators from digging underneath the structure, we put this hardware cloth all the way around the entire, uh, both the runs and the coop itself. <clears throat> in the back, we put a little trench in and put a uh, rubber roofing up onto the backside just to help shed water off because we are on a hill and we don't want our runs and inside the coop to get wet because that's detrimental to the chickens. So let's go around back and we'll show you uh, kind of the backside of this structure. All right, so, and as you can see, um, at the very, at ground level, we dropped a two by six all the way around. That's around both of the uh, runs as well as the base of the um, framing of the coop. And that's just where we have something to attach our, our hardware mesh to and um, to secure it to the ground. Um, and as you can see, we just ditched this section out. I also threw a couple tim timbers in here on the back side, And this helps shed that water off and run down the, uh, the sides of the runs instead of going inside of the run. Um, outside's pretty good. We haven't had any issues. We've had some super hard rains here this past month and uh, they've stayed very dry. So thumbs up on that one. Let's go inside. I'll show you the framing construction of the interior of the, of the coop. Where is he? Who knows? So for the interior, it's a pretty basic Basic design, just pole born design. We have four by fours, um, 48 inch on center, and uh, two by fours to skirt around for, for a nailer. Um, 
we buried the post, of course, below frost line so it doesn't sink, and then put that bottom batter board on just to secure it to the ground and have a place for our hardware mesh to attach to. Um, our, our, our nesting boxes, we did 12, 12 by 12 by 12, just 12 inch square, all directions. Put a little roof on top just to keep them from flying up there. Now, I know it's controversial. We'll throw it out there. We did use natural uh, sticks for the uh, for the roost and the perch for them to to climb up in their nesting box. I seem to, they seem to like it. We haven't had any really issues. Um, we kind of go with the the thought that hundreds of years ago they probably didn't use two by fours for chickens to roost on, and um, you know maybe they should have two by fours. But we went with this. It's been good. We made sure to clear off any. Any, any sharp spots or high spots so that we don't have to worry about an injuring their feet or anything like that on that. We do, however, have some uh, two by four perches. Um, those are being worked on currently. They're not, they're not in here. We're doing some revisions to them that will prop up against this other wall as well. Um, we did the deep litter method in here. So this is all ground uh, below wood chips uh, just to build compost and uh, give them a little extra heat. So we're making contact with the ground and using the earth the way I believe God intended us to do. So far this coop, uh, no bad smells. Uh, that would be Harvey Usury. Uh, talks a lot about the, the deep method and that's kind of where we got turned onto that as well. Um, we've had zero issues with it. Building compost, the chickens seem to love it. And of course we don't have to clean this thing out every you know couple weeks, every week. Uh, with chicken poop and all that kind of stuff and then hauling that stuff around. This here, we should be able to go four, five, six months at a time before we clean this out. And once we do that, we have great compost, which if you're gardening, uh, we all need that. So uh, that's it on the inside. We also did a drop down door. One last thing, our drop down doors on each side of the coops that go to the runs. Basic construction, um, just put a latch on each side of the doors. And of course, to save our backs because those are never never as good as they should be the older you get. Um, we just attached a rope to them so we can come in and uh, shut these things, pull the rope up, shut them, lock them all up. We put one on each end along with a 16 foot uh, run and that way we can either open both sides up, let them get some real good running in, um, or we can open one side at a time, kind of bounce them back and forth. We also use our Premier One fencing and attach to the doors on each end that we installed um, on the runs. And that way, when they start tearing up the hillside a little too much, we can actually monitor which side we let them go out with. So let's go out and check out the uh, runs. All right, so the runs. Everybody was super interested in how we constructed these runs. And all in all, it was pretty a uh, pretty easy, cheap way of doing it. Um, we tossed around a lot of stuff, you know, one thing about a run is you want protection from above as well as sides and below and, and so instead of building a fence and then tying string back and forth or putting mesh across the top to keep the hawks out from, from coming in, we opted to use cattle fencing. These are 16 foot cattle panels. We built a frame around the base, two by six frame, which hardware cloth we dug down. And this frame is actually just attached with uh, two by two stakes. We took two by two stakes, drove them in the ground on the, um, the outside, screw them to the sides after we squared them up. Once we did that, we dug down 12 to 16 inches, put our hardware cloth down inside there, and then backfilled that in. Um, once it was backfilled, all we did was take the cattle panel and put it in and, and bend it over. Once we bend it over, we kind of get the shape and the form that we wanted for this, this uh, run. So we've got a 16 foot run, perfectly symmetrical around the, well, in theory, perfectly symmetrical other than high, hanging off the side of this hill. But um, what also is nice is we can actually walk in and out of this coop. We're not having to bend over, crawl in. And that was kind of the problem we had with one of our first coops we had, which is our little baby, little baby coop. Um, just trying to shut the doors up was a little, little rough, especially for uh, 
for a 270 pound six foot one man. Um, this here, way better uh, alternative. I can actually walk in here, move around without bending over my and, and dipping my head and smacking anything. So um, we did cattle fence on the on the face. We basically just cut this face down and took a pair of bolt cutters and we chopped these off and folded over some ends. Um, you can see that to a degree. Some of these are folded over that we, uh, once we took our, um, our, our, our bolt cutters and then just folded those over and secured them. And we secured this whole thing with, um, these are our uh, concrete uh, rebar ties. You buy these at Lowe's, they come in packages of 50, 100, 500. And it's just a piece of wire that you put a hook tool in that spins. As you rotate it, it twists it up. And, um, you know, where's it going to go at this point? We actually attached them all the way along, and that's how we attached our hardware cloth. These here don't have any sharp edges. We don't have to worry about the chickens hurting themselves, running into them. And uh, we just space those out on each panel and run those all the way around. Uh, about every 16 inches in every direction to uh, hold this all together. The outside, we actually did a double two by four construction uh, sandwich, sandwiched in our uh, cattle fencing. And that's how we built our doorway. Um, instead of spending all the money for uh, pre-made doors or putting a lot of time into making a wood door, which a wooden door is always going to warp. It's always going to have weak spots and come apart, we went ahead and took a piece of cattle fencing and cut that out to make our door. We zip tied our hardware cloth to the base. And now, um, come on out here, show them on the outside. Our hinges are nothing more than uh, fencing nails. So we just used a fence nail and nailed these every joint up underneath to, for support, put doubled up on each end, and then attached our hardware cloth. And then of course we just drove a stake to put into the ground to hold the door back. But this was a great alternative and cheap alternative to trying to take treated lumber and build a door frame and get it square. And of course it's gonna shrink, it's gonna contract, it's gonna expand, depending on if it's cold or hot. And it's always a pain trying to fight a door. This one here we can secure super, super tight and all we did was did the same thing on the other side and we have um, two fence nails that we just bent a hook and drop those in. And as you can see this thing, no predator is going to get up under there. It's going to have to fight if it can. And um, of course, secure in the, if it's bad weather, or we're going to leave the house. We want them to still have some freedom. This was a great way of doing it. So, don't spend the money on all the all the treated lumber and the doors and, and, and stuff like that when you can just put your own together quick and simple. Let's go inside. So on the inside here, as you can see, I'm, I'm 6'1", and I can clear all this area in the center. And this is even with the heel. Uh, you know, if this was put on a, a flat piece of ground, we'd even have a little bit more head space. But as you can see, we have four panels here to get our 16 foot. It's actually a little bit over 16 foot because cattle panels are over 48 inches wide. Um, and then of course the bottom of the panel, same thing. Every few inches we attached them with a fence nail as well. Just nailed it right into our two by six board. Um, and that way there's no moving this structure. We had some ridiculous winds here, uh, 60, 70 mile an hour gusts just the other week. No issues whatsoever, nothing come apart, stayed stayed sturdy, tarp stayed on, chickens were nice and, and cozy and happy. Um, we attached it straight to the side of the, uh, the coop, the same way we, we nailed into the wall with the, um, with the fence nails. And we basically just put a ridge beam a two by four ridge beam all the way from the, the wall of the coop. At the center point, we braced it with two two by fours and we drove a two by four around 16 inches down into the ground and then screwed it to secure this coop 
um, so that there's no give or movement because these just sitting on the ground or tacking them to the two by six. It didn't work as good and we were looking for a sturdy. We were looking for 260, 270 pounds to be able to uh, hang by. So, and on the other end, we built our doorway and put a ledge for the other side of our uh, ridge beam, basically to rest on. Um, and that is it as far as the construction on the inside of the runs. The tarp, we got the tarp just a little bit longer. So it's a 16 foot coop. I believe this, this was an 18 foot tarp. And the reason we did that was, is we folded it back under itself and we, and we tucked in a ratchet strap. The ratchet strap is attached at the frame on the one side, goes into the little cubby hole here where the tarp rolls over itself. It comes down and then we ratchet strap the end to pull it taut. Now we have this super secure tarp. So no matter what, wind coming up in here, it, there's no moving. We attached it to the back side um, of the run, screw that in there, and then we run it all the way over to the other side, and then we ratchet it up tight. This way it holds the tarp snug and secure. Any wind that comes underneath here is not, not letting this thing move around. Um, we, we put the tarp stationary on the back side of this, this run. Um, just, just because we're only going to be rolling up one side of this coop. Um, the front side, however, we installed bungees so that when the, the weather is nice, it's warm out, we can actually roll this tarp up and give them all that, that fresh air and breeze. So if you look out here, you can see how that works. So the tarp to keep it from flopping around, we took these bungees and again, we just drove fence nails in partially around each bungee strap. And um, this way we could unhook and hook relatively easy and keep this thing from flopping all over the place with the weather. Um, in the summertime, spring and summer, we'll pop the bungees, roll this tarp up and we have just uh, clamps, just uh, hand clamps that we can clamp this tarp down to the to the, the cattle fencing and get the fresh air moving in and in, inside and out of the, uh, of the coop. So this was, uh, I think the build total, we're looking at around $2,500 all in. That is for an eight by 12 structure, hard framed um, with two 16 foot uh, runs. And that was all material, of course, us doing the labor. Um, <laughs> With the prices of coops that they are going today, this was a great price with 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 getting a prefab one that's dropped out here, and then you've got to set it up, and you still need runs and stuff like that. So, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And like I said before, if you would like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Um, make sure to check us out at Mountain Readiness. We're on all the platforms, MountainReadiness.com. Uh, Facebook, Instagram. I got on TikTok. I'm not sure why. You can also catch me on the Angry American podcast with Chris Weatherman, the author of the post-apocalyptic uh, book series Home, and he just finished his 12th book. Check him out. Uh, you can get his stuff on Amazon. But uh, let us know if you have any comments or questions uh, or critiques. Help us out. Make sure to tune back in. We're going to be doing a security system. We're going to go ahead and do uh, a hot wire all the way around this and wire this in uh, with our Premier One fencing. We'll catch you next time.